a man. He stands alone, a messianic figure upon a central podium, his face stony with contemplative awe. All around, a seething mass of bodies, with eyes on him, slowly turn and lower themselves into the dirt at their feet. Across the rooftops and rafters, and the buildings around, so too do members of this eclectic audience fall before him. The man watches on, his beaten and weary face unflinching. Slowly, tentatively, amongst the great ocean of humans, ripples emerge. Small pockets of tenderness erupting forth from the prostrate figures all around. Hands reaching up to caress faces, arms locking themselves into embraces, cheeks pressed against cheeks, and lips. A young woman and a lad share a kiss, whilst two other women weep with joy as they bring their foreheads together. A young nun, all vows forgotten, links hands with others as the notions of gender and sexuality grow ever more fluid amongst the minds of the crowd. One woman removes the cap of her neighbour and others follow suit. Gentlemen and paupers, serfs and ladies, all class and circumstance meaningless in the face of the passion. Still the man observes, perplexed, calculating. His mind races as his eyes dart amongst the crowd. His blue suit cuts like a shining beacon amongst the increasingly flesh-toned horde. A jacket is removed, then another, and another still, their owners quietly acquiescing, lost in the moment. A smile broaches the man's face as they continue, compelled beyond thought and reason. A flurry of unlacing, a hat knocked askew, a woman's hastily bared shoulder looks set to encourage more. Shirtless bodies flit back and forth as further garments are loosened, and the physicality grows less platonic. Arms shoot up like masts, raising great sails of clothing, now naught but flags, fluttering in the breeze, bearing the colours of lust, and hailing the armies of breasts, backs and buttocks beneath. Thousands of mouths explore the now further areas of bare skin, pausing only to smile the sweet smiles of unbridled jubilation. Taboos and barriers are torn asunder, like the shirts and dresses the crowd fight to remove. A balding man grasps a woman tightly. A young lady lays with an old man as his face lights up with surprise and delighted expectation. Men of the cloth cast off the aforementioned, both literally and metaphorically. More young people kiss as what few garments remain are shed, exploring their bodies in groups of two or more. An elderly couple share a tender moment as their younger compatriots act in kind with considerably more vigour. The figure on the podium looks on with solemn wonderment. Amongst the writhing sea of naked bodies an errant foot kicks over a basket of yellow plums. They cascade to the floor, their tiny forms almost glowing amongst the blankets of carnality. The appearance of the plums clearly has a marked effect on the man in blue. His expression shifts, softening as the memories pour forth. Yellow plums, sliced by a red-headed maiden, his presence behind her barely registered as she continues her work. His face is adorned with a wistful sorrow. Now he is before her. She is surprised but not overtly frightened. On the podium, he closes his eyes, willing himself into the past, the line between memory and imagination no longer defined. He takes her hand and slowly, cautiously, she stands. The sound of the crowd and the air around him seem distant, unreal, as he retreats further into his mind. His face soft and temper mild, he exhales deeply before she delicately draws him into an embrace. Opening his eyes to observe the crowd again, he draws upon the sight to conjure images of himself and the maiden also engaged in gentle coercion, her hand upon his cheek, their noses touching as they share a single, solitary osculation. A tear rolls down the man's cheek as the smile the images have brought fades into regretful sorrow. In his mind he sees the lifeless corpse of the red-headed girl, lying alone on the dark cold cobbles of an empty back alley. As memory and imagination divide once more, another tear falls upon his cheek and descends, as if weighted by the heaviness in his heart. There's nothing funny about that. <laughs> <laughs>